Hey, welcome to our live Q&A. Good afternoon from rainy Tennessee. Yeah, we've got power now, so that's exciting because we <laughs> didn't for a while. Yeah, this morning our power went out. I think we could have still done a live video. Like if we're really committed, yeah, we would have still showed up. But it might have been a dark screen. That would have been the hard part. We could have gone live because our phones worked, but it would have been a dark house. It would have been weird. <laughs> the creepy live Audio Q&A. only. <laughs> So right. we've got a list of questions. If you're watching this later, you can still ask questions because we will um, we'll answer them at another Q&A or we can message you if you need us to. So we do these about once a month. Um, so anytime you have questions, we can answer them at another Q&A. Or uh, if you're hopping on live, then you can ask a question while we're here and we can throw it into the mix. <laughs> Why you what? like over enunciate mix? That's uh, just how you say it. That's how people say mix. Isn't that how everyone says it? Good thing I teach our kids language arts. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the questions we're going to answer is how to stay motivated while losing weight. We're, that's a, one that's common, especially I feel like around this time of year when people are thinking about January coming up and mm. wanting to be motivated with New Year's stuff, resolutions, and whatnot. So we're going to go into that. That'll be one of the questions we answer later, but we're going to, uh, let's just kind of go down the list, and maybe we'll do an exercise one, and then a nutrition one, and go back and forth, see what we've got time for. Let's do it. Okay. See what you got. So these are questions people have asked previously. At some point or another. <laughs> Whether it be clients or people online or whatever. Yeah, these are these are questions uh, that people ask because that's how Q&A's work. Do we have to explain how Q&A's work? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Why don't you just go ahead? No, no, I want to hear what you had to say. Mm -mm. I do. What was it? It's gone. No, I want to know. We're just going to have some awkward we'll silence here. We'll sit here with, uh, I won't say another <laughs> word. Who, if you're watching now or later, who do you think is more stubborn? <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough one. I don't even know the answer Let's, to that. And then you can just watch to find out. Okay, well, I'm not going to leave them sitting with silence, so I'm going to keep going. <laughs> That's your advantage. Okay, so first question. What if I can only work out once per week? So one time a week workouts. Um, okay, so the short answer to this is that's fine. There's a lot of... Can I answer it? You, sure. Can I correct you if you say yeah. something that I don't like? <laughs> um, yeah, if it's, if it's once or none, once is awesome. Yeah. But there's, you know, you have some guidelines on how that would look, right? Oh, you're not going to get more than no, that? No, that's it. That's all I got. Like, if it's none or once, um, please do it. Yeah. What a lot of people don't realize is that they've got this, okay, yeah, like what you said, something is better than nothing. Although, like in our blog last week, a lot of times doing less exercise can be more beneficial. Um, I would say for a lot of people, doing one workout a week is actually more, is a better idea than trying to do a workout every single day or even five or six days a week because for most people that's not realistic you're not going to do it consistently you're going to give up and you're going to stop whereas if you consistently do one a week for the rest of your life you would be amazed at how much progress you can make off of that one workout per week now i'm not saying that when i say amazed what i mean is like you would have noticed you'd see a noticeable difference i'm not saying that you would become the most fit person in the world but you would become you could become very healthy and very fit and uh, have um, very noticeable results from that one workout a week i tend to suggest people do at least two a week um in fact i two to three is kind of my go-to but two is absolutely totally fine one is okay if you only do one a week what that's going to do especially if you're trying to lose weight what that's really good for is that's going to help make sure that the weight that's coming off is that you're losing fat. If you're doing one workout, make it a strength workout. So lifting weights or body weight exercises like push-ups, whatever, that's going to help keep your muscle and bone density so that when you're losing weight, it's actually fat that's coming off. And just one workout a week with that, with that, that one workout being a strength workout will absolutely get that job done for you. So beyond that, it, like I said, you can, you can get great results from it. You'd probably, most people would probably be better off doing two a week, but if you can only do one, not only is that enough, but yeah, you'd be buzzing there. Okay.
workout should look at like. Was it, um, I think what I would want to know is like how long does that workout need to be? Yeah, so if you're only doing one a week, you can still, I mean, honestly, it doesn't have to be any longer than if you're doing two or three because I would still say around 30 minutes. Give it 30 minutes. If you're only doing one a week, probably 10 minutes is not going to be really quite enough to to do the things that I was saying, like to cut back on uh, losing bone density and muscle if you're losing weight. So you're probably, what, what you really wanna do is make sure that you're working your full body in that workout. So you're gonna need to do exercises that hit a little bit of everything. You can do that in 10 to 20 minutes, but you would be better, you're going to hit more of your body a little bit more effectively if you allow at least 20 to 30 minutes. So, and you know, if you've got time, if you're like, I can only work out once a week, but I've got time to do it as long as what I want, then great, then go for 45 minutes. You don't really need to go longer than that. And that's only if you actually want to spend the time doing it. And I mean, even an hour is fine. I'm not saying that's bad, but you don't need to have this really super long extended workout. You can get something done in 20 to 30 minutes, or you can spend 45 minutes to an hour, just kind of find what is actually going to be realistic for you that you're going to stick with. Yeah. That's a good answer. That's a very comprehensive answer. Okay. Well, question. Thanks. Let's find a nutritional one. Nutrition so, question. do you want to pick? No, just do it. Okay. Ready? Well, Go. What are some? <laughs> what are some? I'm I'm not a trained dog. <laughs> Kids are trying to get me to come like a dog this morning. I know. I heard that. <laughs> what are some quick, easy foods that are healthy? Okay. Um, I think that you have to know what is actually healthy. Um, to be able to to be able to decide what's quick and easy. Um, we easily can get ca carbs and fats in our diet. That's something that we don't, most people don't have trouble getting um, during the day. So making sure that you're focusing on grabbing a protein and or a vegetable that are quick and easy to supplement what you're eating would be the, the strategy there. And some specific examples of quick and easy protein, boiled eggs, quick, cook your eggs in the morning, scrambled eggs over easy, whatever. Um, smoked salmon, I'm looking at my list that I give my clients actually. Cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, um, meat sticks. I mean, some of these are a little bit better choices than others, but working with what you have, um, protein shakes or powders are okay. Lunch meat, tofu, edamame. Certain lunch meat is also better than others. Yeah. Like they're trying to get as a less processed kind yeah. if you can. But if you're picking like lunch meat or Oreos, I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, then, you're, then the lunch meat's giving you the protein that you're missing yeah. out on. And the Oreos are just giving you more of the carbs and fats that you probably already get enough of. Yeah, and the, the other thing I do to make veggies quick and easy, just to add to um, meals or grab one on the go instead of eating my kids' snacks when we're in the car, um, baby carrots, uh, grape tomatoes, sliced cucumbers, Baby bell peppers are super fun. Anything mini and baby, super fun, no prep involved. Um, we always keep, most of the time, keep some sort of cooked vegetable on hand that I can toss together with a meal. Um, those are the ways to add quick and easy foods that are healthy to your diet. I think I answer it, unless you want me to go into like carbs and fast too. No, I think that's a good strategy is not worrying because a lot of times people worry about specific, very specific foods, which you gave some examples of that. But I like the strategy of just going, okay, I probably am missing out on protein and veggies as a whole. So let's find some ways to get that in. Mm -hmm. So I like that. Okay, next question. Should I do cardio or strength exercise first? So if you're going to do both. My first answer to that is that if you've got a really good strength program that can cover a lot of the bases for cardio, so you don't necessarily have to do separate cardio as an exercise, um, it is still good to do cardio because that doing cardio specific exercise is going to be good for your heart, mm -hmm. um, good for your overall health. but. Um, I just want to get that out of the way and say you don't necessarily have to do both. You'd be surprised with what a good strength program can do to really improve your, your cardiovascular health, your heart health. Um, but if you're going to do one or the other first, there's two ways to look at this. And I'm just going to give you the quick answer for it. The, number one is what's more important to you. 
do that first because if you are, if you have a goal of like, okay, I want to run a marathon, then you should probably be working on the thing that's going to help you run that marathon yeah. as opposed to, I mean, you should still work on your strength because that's going to help make sure that you don't get hurt running the marathon. A lot of people don't have the strength needed to run a marathon without getting hurt. Um, so, but, but still like the thing that's the priority is what you should do first. That said, there are two problems with that answer. One is that a lot of people think that they need to work on cardio. So like if you get tired going up the steps, you're like, oh, my cardio is so bad. A lot of times that actually is a strength problem and you're not getting tired because you have bad cardio. You're getting tired because your legs are not strong enough to support you lifting your body up the steps. And so that gets you winded because you just don't have the strength to keep up with mm -hmm. it. So that's one problem with saying that. The second one is that um, most people don't really know whether they should prioritize cardio or strength because they don't have a goal of running a marathon. Most of our clients are not interested in running a marathon, um, maybe, a, you know, maybe a 5K or something. But So if you don't know, just in general, I always recommend putting strength exercise first. So, And the reason for that is because of what I said at the beginning, which is that strength exercise can cover a lot of bases. It can be good for cardio. It can be good for flexibility and mobility. You can do a lot with a strength exercise. So you do that first. That's going to, you can get the most bang for your buck. And then if you still got time or you just want to do some extra cardio, then that's fine. But do the, do the strength first so that you're getting more done all at once. And then if you run out of time or if you just don't want to do more, then at least you've gotten more done from that strength program than what you would have from just by starting and doing cardio and skipping the strength. Answer. Cool. Nutrition question. Let's see. How many times a day should I be eating? Hmm. Uh, I don't think there's any one answer for everybody. There isn't one strategy that is the only way to do it for each person. I think the more important thing to do is to learn what you should be eating and how to get balanced meals and starting to learn um, when you're actually hungry and when it's boredom or you're tired, that's kind of making you feel like you want a snack and responding to that, knowing the foods that you should be eating and, and really tuning into uh, that. There isn't um, any science-y thing that says, you know, if you eat every two to three hours, you're gonna Speed up your hack metabolism. into your metabolism. No, you know? it's not real. People do say that, but it is not, it's, there's no truth to it. Yeah, some people do feel better eating every two to three hours and that works for them and that's what they should do. And then other people do better having a longer space between meals because they just feel better like that and, and that's more natural to them. So it's really what is gonna work with your schedule and your body and also really knowing how to build a balanced meal and paying attention to your hunger. What I will say, because I wrote a blog on this a while back and remember putting a lot of thought into this, the only thing I would add to that is that most people end up, and this is a generalization, so it's not just a guideline, like still fall back on what you just said, but most people do best by eating at least three or four times a day. Yeah. Um, when I'm running numbers for a client and figuring out what they should be eating, it usually balances out between three or four meals a day. Yeah. And that's just for, again, it's not because of some sciencey thing. It just is practically speaking, that's what tends to be realistic for most people. Between work and if you schedule. Eat, if you eat less than that, you tend to run into problems because then you're not eating enough and you're hungry and then you're binging later. Or if you try to force yourself to eat a whole bunch of meals, then it's less enjoyable. Less enjoyable and it's like, okay, well, I was supposed to eat now, but I didn't because I had this meeting, whatever. So it becomes that's... more focused on the volume and the eating and the frequency than it is like if you're eating too much and not feeling great. Yeah. But that's really the underlying principle there. Okay. So how much time do we have here? We're at 15 minute mark, so I think we have one more uh, question. We've, we've hardly done any. We'll have to do another one. We need to do two more. Okay, two more questions, guys. And then the last one will be how to stay motivated. Okay, sure. Okay, so the next one's an exercise fitness one. What you got? No, let's do one of, let's, let's, okay, fine. That's fine. I don't care. We'll do this I'll one. just take in charge. How do you know when to go up in weight for any exercise? So I guess that, that's a good one because I've been talking about strength exercise. So lifting weights, you're doing an exercise. This one's really hard to answer because it's every exercise is so different as far as going up in weight. There are some exercises that 
you just won't ever go up in weight like once you get to a certain point uh, a lot of like shoulder exercises like lateral raises most people are not going to be going up and wait a ton on those. You're never going to be get. it's not like you can just say, okay, add five pounds to this lift every week or every month even, because like once you get up to 10, 15 pounds, if you're real strong, like 20 pounds, then that's about how much an exercise like that can handle. So that's, this one's a difficult one to answer, but I am going to give just, um, again, a generalized practical advice on how you can kind of do that is that with most exercises, I like to kind of shoot for a certain rep range. So let's say you're doing you're doing squats and you're doing 10 of them. Let's make that a range of eight to 10 or 10 to 12 or eight to 12, it doesn't really matter. Once you can do the high end of that range, so we'll just say eight to 10. Once you can do 10 and you can do that on every set, then go ahead and go up and wait. If, as long as you're doing really good reps, it feels, you know, you're not, your form's not getting bad or sloppy or anything, then do more weight and see if you can only do eight then at that point. Add five pounds to that squat. That's something that pretty much anybody could do. And do eight. And once you can comfortably do 10 at that weight, then go up again and do fewer reps the next time. So that's kind of a, just a general guideline of when to go up and wait. It's not a matter of, there, there's never really a time where you should just go, okay, I've been doing this for a certain amount of time and I, so now I have to go up and wait. Like go up when you are doing a certain amount of reps that feels comfortable, it's gotten easier for you. Um, Cause sometimes that's just better progress than even going up and wait anyway, is don't, don't just go, I need more weight. Go, oh, can I do one extra rep? Can I do the same amount of reps, but, it, it just is, it feels easier for me. I'm definitely feeling stronger. All of that is progress. So there isn't like a, any hard rules for when to use more weight with an exercise other than if what you're doing feels easy or easier, then then yeah, go ahead and, and try to go up in weight. But again, it depends on the exercise. So it's this is a super difficult one to answer without a it's without knowing exactly what exercise you're talking about. Can you, if you can't answer this quickly, don't yeah. answer it. What if I don't want to figure any of that out? Then you have to hire me. Okay. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> just so you know, like you don't have to, that was really complicated. Yeah. And it can be difficult to figure out. And that's kind of what we do is we take that guesswork out and we make it real clear what you should be doing. So yeah, there's not, I mean, over time, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get with it and understanding it. Yeah. But if you're just wanting help with it, I mean, you're, there's not an easy, clearly not an easy answer just to, in general. So yeah, getting help is definitely the only way you can do it if you don't want to figure it out yourself. I won't. I know you won't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so the last question is, how do you stay motivated to keep losing weight? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give the short answer first that a lot of people I think are not going to like, which is that you cannot stay motivated to continue losing weight. It's not possible. So I know that sounds like maybe a cop out and not what you want to hear, but it's super important to understand that because if you're expecting to me to be motivated for however long till you reach your goal, it's just not going to happen. Um, there will be days where you wake up and you don't want to do it. Yep. And the, um, I forgot what I was going to say now. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. That's, just just forgot where I was. Oh, uh, okay. So I, I am going to give a little bit of a little bit of guidance on this because there are some practical things you can do to uh, get motivated and to um, and to continue on even when you're not motivated. So number one is the best way to stay motivated is by getting results. So once you start losing weight and you're seeing where you're going with it, that's really good motivation to be like, I can, I can keep doing this. So the problem is a lot of people get started and to no fault of their own, what they're doing doesn't give them great results. Um, and there can be a million reasons for that, which that's actually another 
question that we'll, we'll answer later. But, but so if you get started and the results aren't going like what you want, either because you, you're just, your expectations were set yeah. falsely, <laughs> like they weren't good expectations. You wanted to be done and you did the weight loss rate that was too fast and too hard to keep up. Yeah. Or just whatever program you're following wasn't right. Like you said, I need to eat this many calories and guess what? It wasn't right. You should have <laughs> eaten less or whatever. Um, that's going to be real hard to stay motivated when you're not seeing that progress. Yeah. So just having something that actually works, especially when you first get started is really helpful. That's super hard. Even as coaches, we can, we can absolutely guarantee that you get results, but we can't guarantee that you're necessarily going, that what you do in the first week or two is going to immediately get you those results. What we can do as coaches is look at it and go, okay, here's what we're seeing is happening. If you're not getting results, change this and you're going to start getting those results. That's a lot harder to do by yourself. Yeah. So again, that's another thing where you, you kind of need help with it. But bottom line is you need to be doing something that is working and let those results then fuel your motivation. So that's the biggest way to stay motivated is having an actual good program that you know is going to work. Because mm -hmm. there honestly shouldn't be any question about whether it'll work or not. Um, there can be question as to, okay, like I said, is this going to work right away or am I gonna have to make an adjustment after the first week or two? Fine. But there really should be no question. Weight loss is not something that's like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work for me. I've got all these other issues. I've tried this in the past. No, it can work guaranteed for you no matter what. You just have to know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's number one for staying motivated. Now we got it. Our... No, you're getting a call. Yeah. So that's number one for staying motivated. Number two. Is this still going? Yeah. Okay, good. Number two then is the practical steps for how to... Um, how to continue to keep going with weight loss even when you're not motivated. Mm. And with that, there, there are a lot of different things I could say here, so I'm gonna boil it down to keep this as short as possible because we're already going a little longer than we wanted to. But um, the, one of the biggest things is knowing that you're not gonna be motivated means you should plan for that and plan for those times. In fact, that's the only thing I'm, I'll, I'll dig in specifically, but that's the only one thing I'm going to say about this is plan to be not motivated. And what that means for you specifically may be different from what it means for another person. But just as an example, I would say set uh, really realistic and achievable goals. Not so crazy easy that you're not getting that motivation. Or that result. Or the results. But set it easy enough so that when the motivation is gone, you don't have to white knuckle it to keep going. Yeah. It should be something that is still possible for you even when the motivation has fade, faded. And then, and then beyond that, take planned breaks because you're gonna get to a point where you're not motivated. So have a planned idea of, I know that after a couple months, I'm probably gonna lose motivation because that's typically what happens to yeah. me. So after a couple months, I'm going to work on not losing weight but Planned break is totally intentional. It's still intentional. You're Planned. still going to work on healthy eating yeah. habits. You're still going to work, but you're not going to be losing weight. So it's going to be so much easier on your body. It's going to feel better because you'll be eating more food. Your workouts will feel easier because you'll have more energy. So planning those things. And that's, I'm, I guess I'll just end it there because that's the whole idea is that plan on not being motivated at some point. And what are you going to do when that happens? Yeah. Because it is, going, it is going to happen. Yeah. You can't stay motivated. You need to have a strategy for when it is working and when it isn't working so that you can keep working towards your goal. Because especially for the people who need to lose, you know, 50 to 100 pounds, it's going to take a while. And yeah. it's maybe a year or more. And that is maybe. hard to stay motivated. I mean, you can lose it. You can lose 50 pounds in half a year. Okay. I'm well, just, well, I just want to put that out there. Like, yeah. but you're right. Yeah, it could take you. If you've got goals that are going to take you a year or more, you're probably not going to be able to just do... I'm starting here and I'm losing weight and I'm done. Like it's there's going to be times where like, yeah. Yeah, you got to yeah. take those, those breaks. For sure. Okay. Well, that was really good. And if, if you want to talk more about that, cause I feel like there's more that we could say about it, then you can message us and uh, we're happy to tell you more. Yep. And if you have any other questions, put them in, we'll answer them next time. Okay. Cool. The talk end. to you later. See ya. Bye. <laughs>